So John Tiger mentioned people bring value to our community. And today's speaker, I think, has brought value to all of our community and now trying to reach out in a global manner. And the synchronistic thing of this is a talk with Wendy. And then through one of my other online groups, I found out that they were doing a similar type program in India. And Wendy Ray will share more on that. In the early mid 90s, Wendy Ray Johnson was the first woman to be sponsored into the Tahoe City Rotary Club, which met at Garwoods Lake uh, View Restaurant. She was 32 and still a woman of action and sort of a sacrificial lamb, as she learned later, because the charter, the charter of that club was going to be revoked unless they brought in some women. <laughs> so you guys, I'm going to invite her on the 22nd of July. <laughs> So she made lifelong friends and doubled their annual auction met by arranging vacation packs in swaps with the Kauai Club, where she had made up meetings and realized we could really add value to all of our auctions through this type of an exchange. There's an idea for you. Thank you, Wendy Ray. Wendy Ray's personal health journey has led her to study our food system extensively and in dealing with her own chronic issues, through nutrient deep disease foods and lifestyle to his skills. She's learned about soil health and the impact of regenerative practices by watching the Kiss the Ground um, movie on Netflix last summer. She was immediately called to action by the hope she saw and embarked on a nine week intensive course to become a soil advocate through Kiss the Ground online cohort. At the same time, she was in the final stages of selling her business and retiring from a gratifying four, four year career. Earlier this year, Wendy visited the Soil Health Academy PA on farm course held at the Chico State Regenerative Farm. And the solutions are just what Mother Nature designs biomimicry and solve so many of the problems we face today health, chronic disease, water, infiltration and purity, farmers' prosperity and profitability food drought cycle along with carbon sequestration. Plants, plants love carbon. So her desire today is to educate and inspire all who are interested in serving the greatest good and hope for our grandchildren, the community, and the beautiful world. The worldwide regenerative movement provides an array of community and global solutions. And she's here to share what she has learned with us today. Come on up, Wendy. We <clears throat> had a little bit of logistics here. Um, I'm just going to start out with a little bit of an elaboration on the why I became a soil advocate. I didn't know there was a word for this, but I was having what I now heard someone else say, climate anxiety. I um, lived through fires and evacuation, and I was raised in the agricultural rural America of Vacaville, California, where as a child, um, we had lots of insects and, and lizards and frogs. And I remember collecting polywogs and seeing praying mantises and lizards. And you know, that just doesn't happen nowadays for my grandkids. And the more I would read, and you know, as I went on that journey for my own health, I realized there's a deep connection to our agricultural system and our own personal health. So um, when I watched that movie, the first half is pretty depressing. The second, why well, didn't we start this? <laughs> but, um, sorry. You want Olivia, some help? It? Yeah, I, I'll help you start it. Thank you. Uh, it, so I have a three minute video that really talks about, um, in a nutshell, much better the, uh, Well, when he's focusing, I did watch the movie and they did also talk about composting twice. And it's similar to Doc cycle with the toilet and then taking the solids and the, and the urine from and putting it into the crops. And we've already had good demo gardens. So he's really going for it. In the movie, you're going to travel all around the world and see how these projects are happening. They are taking total desert that was created through overgrazing and degrading degraded soil practices, you know, letting cattle just roam, 
you know, that didn't happen in migratory grasslands. I'm going to get into all of that in my presentation, but my why was all about my grandkids. I was picturing them in 20 years and wondering were they going to have any water? You know, what's it going to be like? You know, we see those um, things in other parts of the world. Food scarcity is because of drought, man made drought. Um, when you see these places become the Garden of Eden again, through these bi this biomimicry, the, the way nature wants it. But we have to facilitate that. So when I saw that movie, I'm like, wow, my friend and I said, let's become soil advocates. I was a master hairdresser for 44 years. Well, I wasn't a master in the beginning, but you know, this has nothing to do with my career path, but I was, you know, in semi-retirement, I was called. So my why is all about the future and these kids and what's going to happen for our grandchildren and our children in the years to come. So here's a little short video to start off my PowerPoint and it really um, tells a lot and I just love it. Where's the sound? Uh, it's on your computer. I think you need to unmute yours. Okay, let's pause it. Uh, I'm so I'm sorry. sorry. This is my, I did really well on the line. <laughs> yeah, we're all we didn't want to mute me, out. so we didn't have the feedback. We got to retrain ourselves. You. Yeah, and I got to mute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to. The Okay, I think it should be good now. Let's see. I don't, I can't really rewind it. So we're going to miss about a second of this guy's spiel. It's not playing. Mm, sorry. Okay, let me try. It's not here. <clears throat> sorry. No, you're uh, sorry. We should have tested okay, it out. I think maybe it's because your volume's off. Made it. It's there us. Is. The problem and the solution is simply a matter of doubt. Okay, how do you exit? Escape, it's the only way. Okay, it's probably like a start from the beginning or something. I think it just did it by doing that. Okay. Okay, okay here we go. <laughs> Let's see. Did I okay? share it? I'll have to share it again, no sir. Okay, uh, sorry. Share. There we go. Oh boy. Do you feel hopeless about climate change and the damage we are doing to our planet? I did. I was shown a new way to look at the problem, which made the solution so obvious and so within reach. Change is all about too much carbon in our atmosphere. But carbon's not our enemy, it's the building block of life. And everything in life is us. But the problem and the solution are simply a matter of balance. Let's step back and look at the five pools of where carbon is stored on planet Earth. Starting about 500 million years ago, when plants appeared on land, carbon began to cycle in an amazing balance, the balance that has as we evolved. One life form, us, us, how to explain it. And we burned it for energy. Putting it in play, disrupting that balance. The way we manage and agriculture is moving even more carbon from the soil and biosphere into the atmosphere. Specifically, 880 gigatons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is heating up the planet, destabilizing our climate. The oceans have absorbed a lot of this excess carbon. Which is resulting in ocean acidification and accelerating a vast extinction of sea life. So, in order to save life, 
as we know it? Of course, we have to stop releasing fossil carbon. The big question is, where do we put this excess of carbon to, to get this cycle back in balance? Or the memory says that the solution is right under our feet. It literally is. It's the soil. Plants with sunlight and water from the form of photosynthesis. They pull the air into carbohydrate. Carbohydrate. Sugar. Sugars. Some of those sugars go through their feet. They feed microorganisms that cause that carbon to soil. Soil. Voila. Carbon. Plants pump it. Plants pump it. Soil. And soil. Sports. Living technologies. So, so that, that last, last comment, they're all one. Do you need to mute this? Uh, yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> Do it from up there. I could just turn my volume down. Sure. That works. That works. that better? Yeah. So the health of the soil, the health of us, and, and the reduction of these things, flooding and drought are the two sides of one coin is what I learned. You know, fire is obviously a huge component and practices of regenerative agriculture really mitigate so much of this. Even in really brittle climates, they will be able to, we sequester, and it's called efficient, effective rainfall. Rainfall, rainfall goes in the ground rather than running off on these on this bare soil. The farmers um, are more prosperous. We all can show, I'm going to show you some slides of just how drastic the change is, because right now farmers are suffering. They um, have the highest rate of uh, cancer, Parkinson's, and suicide of any suicide profession of in any the world. The, 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 world. The, the farmers in it the United States. It is level. at catastrophic and levels. The solutions are and the solutions are all in these regenerative practices. People I studied, the people with, I studied with, the people you would see in the ground are converts. These are men that, men that were farming, farming in industrial, industrial agriculture, agriculture monocropping, and tilling and tilling and tilling. And they are now just one of many the Soil Health Academy that I attended, and, and they are, they are, they, they were all, all at Chico State, State University, but they're from Bismarck, Bismarck North Dakota, Dakota, and Indiana, and, and Iowa, and they're, and they're out to, to change our system for the, the, for the health of the farmer and the, and the prosperity of the farmer. farmer. What, what regenerative, regenerative agriculture does is it replenishes our water, water cycles. cycles. I, never I never knew where a stream really came, really came from. It comes from water, water infiltrating into, into the soil sponge. sponge. You know, you know soil, soil that has a living microorganism like, like we see in the forest is infiltrate water, water infiltrates. infiltrates. It doesn't it run, run off. off. The small, small water cycle is something I just learned about, which is attributes of 
50 percent of the rainfall in our country 50 percent comes to the ocean and then after that it's the transpiration of plants that actually seed the clouds we had no idea we've destroyed our small water cycle by fallow giant stretches of land they say if we just cover crop that's the only thing we did is in the fall before the rainy season in these places that are desertified if we just cover cropped and allow that rain to, because of the plant roots to infiltrate, it could, it could change, change everything. everything. It, it, plants take carbon. Well, oh, let's go back and get excited. Um, regenerative, regenerative agriculture restores biodiversity. When you restore biodiversity, you restore the health of everything. Everything is a cascading effect and interconnected. On the farms, On the farms nowadays, through the use of glyphosate and a lot of other pesticides and fertilizers, we kill all the insects. The soil is sterile. And what happens is there's no more life on these farms. These regenerative farms have species that they haven't seen in you know, 50 years. Insects, latent feed banks occur. The fertility of the soil is directly linked to our health. It turns out that... Um, the, 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 biome the biome of the soil and the biome of our ourselves, ourselves are, one are one in the same. And we've killed, and we've killed the biome in the soil through sterilization of the soil. Of the soil. Without, Without that, that, the plant, the, the does, plant not does not uptake nutrients. nutrients. We grow, we grow through, nitrates through nitrates and industrialized fertilizers. fertilizers. Synthetically, we can grow food, grow food but the, but the nutrient, nutrient nutritional value is very low. low. Rebuilding, Rebuilding the soil happens, happens from a plant. Who knew? I didn't. The roots, the roots go into, go the, into ground, the ground, sequester, sequester carbon, carbon, and can and actually, can actually they predict. They predict I brought, I brought my book. book. They can. They predict that. In 20, in 20 years, years regeneration.org, Paul Hawken predicts that they can lower the temperature by one degree Celsius through sequestering carbon in this way. And here's, and here's uh, Ray Archuleta. Uh, he was uh, in the movie, in the movie Kiss the Ground. He was, uh, he was uh, with the NRDC, NRCS, for 32 years working for the government. This was an agency set up by FDR after the Dust Bowl to improve our soil health. And he said he went to school for eight years to ag science, and all they knew was inputs and fertilizers, inputs and pesticides, because once the soil is depleted, now you've got a problem with pests because you don't have the beneficial insects. insects. It, turns it turns out out of 17,000 insects, insects, only like you know, 100, 100 of them are pests. Without, without the, the beneficial insects, insects there's, there's uh, no one, no one they, they, they can't balance, balance each other. Each other. So they, so they just didn't, didn't know the, the discovery, discovery that plants, plants actively cultivate and then extract the nutrients from, from symbiotic, symbiotic microbes is brand, brand new. It's not, it's not really, really that new. new. It's they've they've been, been some people have been talking about it for a while. So the big, so the big difference, difference, and you can see it in this photo better than anything, is treating the soil as if it's a living thing. Instead, Instead of killing, killing which is the, the, the paradigm, paradigm, kill it, kill it, kill it, to try and grow a plant, to try and grow our food. The, the difference, difference is nurturing the soil. soil. These, These are basic indigenous, indigenous practices. It turns, turns out indigenous, indigenous cultures have known this for a long, long, long time. time. So, so, the so the overlap is um, pretty significant. And, and, and we, we, we considered it stewardship, stewardship of the soil today. And, and it's our job to um, take care, care of it. Carbon, carbon is not our enemy. It belongs in the soil. Plants, you may remember from photosynthesis, plants take carbon out of the air. They turn it into sugars, liquid, you know, and 40% of those sugars approximately, they drip into the ground to attract the biome, the microbes. microbes. That's, That's what the microbes eat. Plants, plants don't, don't actually uptake nutrients out of, out of the soil. soil. There's, There's no, no lack of phosphorus, nitrogen, nitrogen and all, all those minerals in the soil. When they test the soil, the, the minute the Soil the Health Academy said they've never, never found a lack of a mineral. The lack is in the biology, so the plants cannot uptake these minerals mm -hmm. without that biology. And when you look at this soil, you see it's got what they call aggregates. That's a, that's a cottage cheesy look, look. That's and that's a little pore space in the soil, soil where, where the, the microbes eat that and they store the carbon. That, 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 that type of soil, soil is 
so rich in the nutrients that it brings. And somebody, uh, Dr. Elaine Ingram is a famous microbiomist. You know, she's been studying the biology in soil for many years and has a prolific um, educational program. And it's all interconnected. You know, I never really realized that, you know, everything the soil needs comes in this soil food web. Because one fish, you know, like a small fish, a big fish eats a small fish and then eliminates and dies. And what happens is all of that becomes nutrient rich food for the plants. Plants need what's called mycorrhizal fungi. We've pretty much killed almost all the mycorrhizal fungi in the um, industrial agricultural practices. And that fungi is what expands the, the root systems literally. And it's found all throughout the forest. And if you wanna watch a really interesting movie, that's Fantastic Fungi on, on um, Netflix. And it is what feeds the plants and makes all those micronutrients bioavailable. Microbes rule the world. It turns out we're more microbes than we are human cells. The um, make the nutrients available to the plants. This, this is, is what a plant root microbiome looks like, like in our lower intestine. intestine. It's very, very similar. similar. We are actually feeding our, our microbes in, in, our, in our life. We don't, our cells, our cells cannot assimilate this breakfast, this breakfast we eat. Our microbes have to break it down. It down. Almost, almost like, like uh, the, biology the biology in the soil or composting, composting. So you know, it turns, turns it into what, what our cells can actually access. access. So, so plants don't, don't have, have the ability to digest, digest soil. soil. I didn't know that. that. It's, the, it's, the, it's the microbes and the worms, and the worms and the nematodes, and the, nematodes and, the bugs, and the bugs, all of that, all of that symbiotic relationship going on that does that. that. So, so when, when you talk, talk about carbon, carbon, which is, you know, what we need to grow a plant, um, you can just see by this picture, the not only the net carbon loss, but the water loss. And plants bring, bring that, that liquid, liquid carbon, carbon, those liquid sugars, sugars they're literally them. attracting their own food. They are, are baiting. baiting. It's kind of like a barter system for, for um, um, the plants, plants and, and the biology, biology that feeds them. them. <laughs> the water, <laughs> water cycle is really, really yeah, damaged yeah, through their soil. And I have a lot of photos about that. that. The, he mentioned in the video composting, you know, you know there's programs in the country you'll, you'll see in the movie where they're now, they're now taking food, food waste. waste. You know, in, in the, the world, world, we grow plenty, plenty of food to feed the whole, whole world. world. And, and uh, 40, 40, 40 some percent, percent of it is food waste. waste. So, so in, in some, some of the larger cities in America, they've done these food waste programs. programs. They are turning that into compost, keeping it out of the landfill, keeping more uh, uh, greenhouse gases, gases from, from the landfill, landfill just going up, but literally, literally turning, turning all of that, that which was grown, grown in the ground, ground back, back into food, food for the soil. soil. You know, you know, I always, I always thought that that, that, that drought, drought was caused by, by the bare ground, ground by, by you know, the bare, bare ground was from you know no rain, rain. but, it, but turns it turns out. out it's, it's the bare, bare ground that's causing, causing the drought because we have no transpiration coming from plants. We don't have um, infiltration or what we call effective rainfall. rainfall. The, the design, design of plants and farmers, and farmers is, is solar, solar panels. Every, every leaf, every blade, every blade of grass, grass every corn stalk, everything we grow, those, those, those are solar panels. panels. They're, they're maximizing, maximizing the solar energy to create food or food for, food for an, an, animals. animals. The, the other, other thing, thing that I see suffering, suffering so much, so much is springs. Is springs. I, I, you know, I never really, really contemplate. contemplate. Where does a freshwater, freshwater spring come from? It comes from our water tables. It comes, it comes, from, comes from water, water infiltrating and, and being purified. The spring, the spring is always is super clear and clean, like just like our Brita, Brita filter, filter is made of carbon, or our water filters filled are filled with carbon. With carbon. So, so is healthy soil. soil. So when you see a spring, that's why it's clear. When you see a muddy River, river, which I'll show you a little picture of that. that. That's, that's man-made. That's, man -made. that's erosion. erosion. That's all that, all that topsoil run being away run away because of a lack of infiltration or aggregate in the soil. In the soil. So, I think so I think these photos speak greatly to how water, how water works, works in, the in the soil sponge. sponge. Microbes, microbes have to have, to have moisture. moisture. Once the temperature, Once the temperature 70, 70 degrees is the maximum, is the optimal, optimal temperature, temperature at which plants grow. Once the soil is air we've all experienced that it's hot 
you know, you go, you, know, you, go a, on a day, warm day, you lay in the cool, cool grass. Cool grass. Plants, plants literally cool the soil, the soil, the soil. And microbes, and microbes really, really run, run the, world. the world. Healthy soil equals equal a healthy biome. biome. Healthy, healthy plants, plants equals healthy, equals healthy animals, animals. And healthy, and healthy humans, humans equals, a equals a healthy planet. planet. The, degeneration the degeneration that's going on on a global, global scale is... is so, so big, big. and it really, really came, came from, from farming, farming practices, practices as far back as the plow, the Roman, the Roman Empire. Empire. The reason it's all buried is all the this runaway it's all buried generative soil. Generative the soil. Erosion the erosion is a cascading just effect. Like in just nature, like in a nature, effect. everything's a cascading so effect. So as we regenerate, so as we regenerate soil their regenerative at soil now at a rate they've could. never it's known they could. It's every continuing year every year to improve matter, the organic matter, the, the, the carbon, the, um, the um, mineral content, mineral content the, availability. the availability. So most so farming, most farming were tilling, 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 uh, uh, most ranching. ranching you, you see nothing but bare ground. ground. There, there are regenerative farmers right, right here in town where you can see forage. They've got, they've got cattle, cattle they've, they've got livestock, livestock and, you and you see the difference. Our biggest, our biggest agricultural, agricultural export is topsoil. Top we are losing topsoil at such an alarming rate that they say in 50 years at the current trajectory, there will be no topsoil. That, that freaks me out. Me out. Four, Four tons of topsoil top per acre is running, running off per year with current practices. The other, the other thing is the, the biome in the soil, soil, soil. The biology of the soil is glyphosate, known as Roundup. In 1996, 15 million pounds. In 2016, 287. That's because just like a lot, a lot of things, things Use, use creates, creates resistance, so more, more, and more and more and more has to be applied. That's three pounds per person, person per, per year, year in the United States. States. It, it floats. floats. It, it goes, goes everywhere. everywhere. It, it doesn't, doesn't just kill weeds. It kills, it kills the biology. It kills the insects. It makes things sterile. Uh, they're, they're now, now recanting uh, that it can't harm us. This is the EPA too. It probably is carcinogenic. Glyphosate it was uh, patented, patented as an antibiotic. And, and we all know what antibiotics do. They, they kill, kill bacteria, bacteria, right? right? They, they are designed to do that. So they do that very efficiently in the soil. And make our stuff, our food, our food pretty much nutritionally nutrition We're not getting the phytonutrients. We're not getting the phytonutrients in our This food. Um, is the dead zone. I don't know if any of you have ever seen ever this. Seen um, this. It, is um, it is at the mouth of the Mississippi, Mississippi 75 River. Miles 75 miles of runoff because of runoff, the, the Mississippi River Delta is filled, filled with, you know, with, you, know, you can, can see in any given year so much flooding, right? Because of the bare ground. And all of those pesticides and all of those fertilizers, a lot of nitrogen, which, which was, was invented, invented after World War II as, as a plant growing device. device. A, synthetic a synthetic application of nitrogen makes, makes your grass, grass grow green, green and it makes the plants grow quick and it also kills everything. That's a 75 mile dead zone. Not one thing is living in that area as a result of the runoff of the topsoil and erosion that carries all the, carries all the farmers hard bought um, inputs, they call them, right down the drain along with their topsoil, and it's a devastating effect. This is um, FDR right after the Dust Bowl, and that's when he formed that, that segment, segment that, that Ray Archuleta, Archuleta worked for for 32 years of the uh, USDA to help our soil health. But like, we didn't know. We just didn't know. Buffalo and elk, elk and deer all, all roam the glass grasslands of America, and we all know what happened to the buffalo. The biomimicry we're talking about in cattle, cattle and grazing, grazing animals, animals today, today were, which are called ruminants, ruminants that, that inoculate, inoculate the soil, they, they eat part, part of it, they move on. The soil then has a chance to regenerate, and it's being fed literally, literally by, by these animals. animals. And, and animal, animal integration is one of the key principles. principles. I didn't, I didn't know, know that the, the third, third of the earth, earth was naturally grasslands. Grasslands sequester, sequester more, more carbon, carbon than anything. The root, the root systems, systems of the grasslands, grasslands are 10, 10 12 feet, feet deep in the, in the native, native, you know, in their, in their native state, state and in their healthy state. state. And, and that's, that's where carbon is really soil, stored, stored indefinitely, yeah, usually about, about 50 years. years. So the first so the present, did anyone ever think about all this? this? All of that, that used to be like, like the land, land of milk and honey. This, this is because of um, 
we didn't, we didn't know. know. And back, and back when, when there was, was a lot less people on the uh, earth, the would degrade an area, and then they just move. And their soil could no longer feed their soil people. No longer feed their people. They just picked them up so and took them somewhere news. else. So here's the good news. Uh, this is a picture uh, that's in the movie, and it's this such an amazing thing. This is China, the cradle of civilization, where they created a desert on the on the left side. Left side. Um, that's the, that's size, the of size of Belgium. They have, they have regenerated, regenerated this. This, this is one of the most exciting, exciting things to see. And it's, and now, it's back now back to the Garden of Eden. This is what every photo every looks at. Looks like a regenerative agricultural setting. This is a farmer. This is a farmer. First year. First year. First year. Farmers have to. They farmers have to. Before they can even plant, an industrial farmer has to borrow money from the government. First, to put in to their, put in their inputs, inputs and, their and their seed and all, and of, that all of that stuff before, before they can even start, start to grow a plant. And then they and then got, got one year to pay the government back on these loans. loans. And, and the, the, the price, price of the inputs and the amount of the inputs they need is ever escalating and their profits are decreasing. And this is why we have the highest suicide rate of uh, any in, any part of the country so, so this, this solution, solution as this guy, guy points, points out he, he, they, they, they reduce labor, labor costs, costs. They, they, they're, they're so, so much more profitable, profitable. and then these people get a life back that's what i think so amazing the farmers we have here are happy they love what they're doing they're they're they're, they're part of nature when you, when you see a regenerative farm and you see the, 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 the butterflies, butterflies and the birds come back and you read about these stories that, of, of renewal where it had been destroyed uh, is just so inspirational. And this is why this is this is, this is Farmer Brown. Brown. He's in the movie. You can watch his YouTube videos anywhere. Just go Farmer Brown. He is the most amazing man. And he was a conventional farmer who got down to, he could, the hail. His Bismarck, North Dakota, three years in a row, he lost 100% of his crops. He went back to look at how Thomas Jefferson farmed. And he and he is now the Soil Health, the Soil Health Academy, Academy, along with, with these other converts. converts. Their, goal Their goal is to convert, convert the monoculture, monoculture farmers, farmers and help their prosperity and restore. And restore. This is what healthy this soil looks like. Healthy soil looks the like. Principles, of principles are first, practices are second. The principles these are the six principles of regenerative agriculture. Of regenerative agriculture. Root, 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 root in the soil as long as possible. As possible. No bare soil. Nature hates bare soil. Anywhere you look that has a natural setting, there is not bare soil. If it's bare, it's because we've been there to destroy it. The armor on the soil, the armor on the soil is litter or, or the stuff or that, the stuff died, that in the forest, died in the forest. In, or in, my yard, in my yard, instead of putting all those leaves in the green leaves, 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 and, and releases, releases carbon. carbon. So we do a least disturbance. So one of the things you ask your farmer at the farmer's market is what are your practices? Low till is great, less tilling. Tilling is destroying our topsoil and causing erosion, no infiltration. The biodiversity, increased biodiversity is, is across the board, not only in the principles, but in the in the core values of regenerative everything. The animal integration helps bring that biology. It turns out that when an elk or a cow or a, a ruminant eats uh, the top, they, they like, like the top, top of the grass because it's the, the most energy. energy. Their, Their saliva, saliva, along with this tugging motion that they do, stimulates the root growth of the plant and helps feed the biology. The plant then knows to grow. The way regenerative practices work, and I go out, on, I volunteer on a farm called Wild Edge Farm right here in town where you can buy your pasture-raised proteins. Um, we move the paddocks. You know, we don't let them graze it down. You know, it, that where you see cattle on a flat where there's no grass, that's overgrazing. That's degenerating the soil. So we're mimicking the migratory practices of the ancient herbivores, uh, ruminants. And context is everything. Like Gabe Brown likes to say, you don't grow bananas in Bismarck, North Dakota. Oh, yeah. Bare soil and cover crops. Bare killing, no killing. Chemicals. Chemicals. Oh, yeah. Continuous grazing is what we see. Continuous grazing is what we see. Where, we see, where we, you know, see someone who's only got two cows, they got big pasture, growing. and you don't see anything this growing. Is this is managed grazing. They get a smaller plot. 
the smaller <laughs> section and they you move them through their uh this is the nutritional value of a regeneratively grown uh, food grown in good soil food grown in industrial soil where you get so many more phytonutrients they're testing it i used to in years years, years ago when i was on my, my journey, journey i would do uh organic carrot versus a regular carrot and you can just blindfold yourself and taste the difference your taste buds are are in a way of seeing the nutrient complexity of food so if it tastes flavorful it's because it's loaded with phytonutrients that's why food tastes better if you're eating uh some food that tastes like nothing it's because there's not much in it when the soil is bare water evaporates carbon oxidizes and microorganisms die so this is the same exact day within a quarter mile of each other in uh, the wine wine country in i think i think california so this, so this is what is happens, happens to the, the gen more, more bare soil, more evaporation, more runoff, more heat, more droughts, more droughts interrupting, interrupting the small water cycle, cycle which, is which is 40%. 40%. Here's, what, Here's happens. what happens. The soil, the soil that's covered, they used to think if you had weeds, weeds it, was it was competing. It turns out the weeds or any roots are feeding the plant and sequestering water and keeping moisture in the soil. More cooling, more, cooling, more, more plant aerosols to seed the clouds and, and um, more cloud formation and consistent rain. rain. This, is, this is what a half an inch of rain, of rain looks, looks like on bare, crummy, crummy degraded, degraded soil. soil. It looks, it looks, looks like, like a flood. flood. That's, That's why drought and flood go together. together. This, is, this what is what it looks, looks like in the, in the Central Valley, Valley of California, California with all those fruit, fruit trees. My, my, but but what's, wrong what's wrong with this picture is this is what happens. Erosion, erosion, no infiltration. We, this, we, checks this checks all, all the boxes for me, human, human health, health our, our health, health, the future, future of our grandchildren, grandchildren and, and true farmer, farmer prosperity. prosperity. They, have they have everything, everything stacked, stacked enterprises. It's so, so inspiration. And seeing, and seeing places, places where, where biodiversity, biodiversity is returned, that my grandkids, grandkids might see a praying mantis or, or you know, a bird, bird that was nearly extinct is, is um, what inspires me. So. Do you want to see the little video? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll stop it. This is this is an ad anyway. This is not the the video you wanted to show. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot. And and regenerative farmers right here in town are on that top of the list. And I, I my my big ask is that you get to know your farmer. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's an honor. When I think about that, they've grown fed me my whole life and I've never really said thank you. Voting with our dollars really changes everything. Not only do we eat locally, we eat more nutritiously, we feed our community. And we reduce the travel. You know, we're not trucking in our food, and it's so much more tasty. That's the big one, and it lasts for weeks and weeks. So. Wendy, thanks a lot. Thank you. All of us can go out and get a group photo with uh, with Jim. <laughs> and for a reminder, for meeting Wednesday, twenty second of July, bring a friend. First of July, I'll spend with you. Have a great time. Let's all go outside. This is an incredible book about things going on all over the world. Regeneration. Okay. Um, find questions. But it's all about success stories and not so successful stories where the turtle dove is returned after near extinction and things like that. <laughs> Super inspirational. Yeah.